moving into Atlanta at Detroit. Do the Lions have one of the best run defenses in the league? Lions fans, no, absolutely. And against, you know, what you got to love if you're a Lions fan is this hasn't just been against like teams that are just kind of like using more of a committee bat. Well, well, actually, let me rephrase. I guess I can't say exactly. They, they, some of them are, but there's always at least one star running back on that roster in the case of the Falcons. And you get my point. There's always, there's always stars that they've been playing against. And I guess if you consider Pacheco a star after last year too, it's kind of, that's kind of, I guess, depending on how you want to view that. But you get my point. Running backs that have proven they can run the damn ball, go over 100 yards. And the Lions are definitely playing very elite run defense on all these guys. They're filling the gaps perfectly. And again, from what we were seeing last year, the jump yeah. that we're seeing this year, oh man, you got to love to see it. The young guys making the jumps, like Ali McNeil, Hutch, you know, the D line is just, it's just, you love to see it if you're a Lions fan. And you love to see it if you're like me and, and your narrative was that the Lions were going to make a huge jump, you know, and you too. It's kind of like, well, the Lions are filling out the narrative kind of how we saw it coming, I guess. Yeah. I'll admit though, the D line does look better than I thought it was going to look this year. Yeah. So I guess my thing too is with the defense, like it, here was my biggest surprise. Like in my opinion, like the Atlanta offense really lives and dies by the rushing game. And to be able to shut down a team like Atlanta in the rushing game. I mean, like what th they held them to 44 yards, like 44 yards with one of the, from one of the best rushing teams in the NFL. Like that to me is great. So I'm, I'm trying to pull up the um, rushing defense and yeah, they are currently fifth in yards allowed per game for rushing like that is top five so you know you let's see where they're at passing let's see where they're at passing passing they're more middle of the pack yeah i was say right in that middle you of the know pack. a little lower middle of the pack but at the end of the day like that's a huge improvement like super super cool to see um another thing also is they made ritter play quarterback and I feel like this is going to be a theme we see like the total Atlanta offense was only 183 yards. And if they can be a top 10, top 15 defense, that's really all they need. Um, so basically on the other side of things on the offense is, you know, their offense is going to score every week. And Laporta again is proving that he legit elite elite realistically could be top 10 by the end of the year. Elite. He already is elite, 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 elite siren. Elite, elite. If the Lions keep improving on defense and stay efficient on offense, plus they get JMO back, they're a top team in the NFC. They That's already crazy. Are, I keep in my forgetting. Opinion. Whenever I'm watching, I'm like, oh my goodness, wait a minute. This little offense is about to get way more cooked in a good way. I get cooked is the wrong word, but they're going to be cooking way more. Yeah. Um, moving over to Atlanta just quickly. They have to find a solution at quarterback. It's just like this offense could be so explosive and it's not. They were four for 12 on passes over 10 plus yards. You can't have this when you have London and Pitts. Teams are going to stop or start selling out to stop the run, which I think is what Detroit did. And it crippled the offense. It crippled them. Um, their defense was okay against the run, but they they're going to struggle against like high flying offenses. Like they really are. And they're lucky because I looked at their schedule and they do not play many explosive offenses, but uh, just it. <sighs> If you gotta, if you're not gonna have a great defense, like your offense needs to operate in two two different games, um, and basically all I was saying is like their rushing offense got shut down and they look like a different team, so they gotta figure it out. So, bro, this this game couldn't have come on better timing because, like we were just saying last week, it's like you know, uh, and it, I wasn't even saying this about the Falcons. I said about another team. I think it was the Viking, but it was about last year. But like when you're getting by on something, you know, you're gonna get exposed soon enough. Yeah, yeah. The Falcons were getting by. Like you said, I'm just, and they're going to keep getting by on it when it's the time, when they can just run the ball through the clock, they're going to get by on it. But when, De when Desmond Ritter's got to make shots, right? And again, this was the game where there was a couple shots, gimmies. Yeah. Gimmies, and you he need missed. to have them. You need to have them. To K. Pitts especially, man, tough, tough. And again, it's from a fan base perspective. Falcons fans would be the first to say, you know, it's like this is the type of thing that's the hardest to watch where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we have everything else we need and we need a guy that's going to make the shot. And we, you know, you've seen this, you and you got the guy, he can't make the shot. He cannot make the downfield shots. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, again, has it been like a huge narrative yet? Cause we're still early in the season. The Falcons being more successful. It looks like on the upward trend is still relatively new, but oh, the discussions will start soon. You know, like how desperately the Falcons need a quarterback. Oh, it's coming. It's so. coming. And Justin Fields will be there shortly enough. 